Welcome to a historic journey that transcends time and boundaries. As we stand on the precipice of a momentous occasion, the echoes of history reverberate between two nations with a shared past of complexity and intrigue. From the scars of the Kenyan struggle for independence to the remote corner where Princess Elizabeth assumed the mantle of Queen in 1952, the ties between Kenya and the United Kingdom run deep. Fast forward to the present day, and the stage is set for a remarkable reunion. It's been four decades since a British monarch last graced Kenyan soil, and the anticipation is palpable. With an official invitation from President Ruto, Buckingham Palace recently announced the imminent arrival of their majesties, King Charles III and Queen Consort Camilla, on a four-day state visit commencing on the 31st of October. But as the world awaits this historic event, it's essential to acknowledge the swirling emotions surrounding it. Kenya's history is woven with tales of British imperialism, the Mau Mau Rebellion, and land disputes, leaving a trail of grievances that linger in the hearts of many. The question that looms large is whether this visit will usher in a long-awaited national apology. In the midst of this emotional tapestry, what lies on the horizon for both nations? What discussions and negotiations will unfold during this high-profile state visit? Join us on this incredible journey of the past, present, and the promise of a brighter future as we unravel the complexities, the hopes, and the dreams that bind two nations in a moment that will be etched in history. Let's dive into the intriguing world of the official state visit of King Charles III and Queen Consort Camilla to Kenya. At the esteemed invitation of President Ruto, their majesties are set to touch down in Kenya as the nation gears up to mark 60 years of independence. The significance? It's the very land where Queen Elizabeth II's illustrious reign took flight back in February 1952. And in the authentic Kenyan ethos of seeking value and benefit from the endeavor, we look into their majesty's calendar, as stated by the Buckingham Palace spokesperson, on the intent of the visit and what benefits we stand to gain as a nation. Even before setting foot in Kenya, their majesties reach out to Kenyans abroad with a pre-state visit reception at Buckingham Palace on October 24th, symbolizing the deep-rooted connections between both nations. Upon arrival, King Charles III and Queen Camilla will traverse Kenyan landscapes, from Nairobi City County to Mombasa County, initiating transformative initiatives. Their mission, fortify mutual prosperity, combat climate change, empower youth, champion sustainable development, and foster regional stability. This isn't your typical royal tour. Their agenda reads like an epic novel, from meeting President Ruto and the First Lady to engaging with United Nations, luminaries, CEOs, faith leaders, and the Kenyan Marines trained by United Kingdom's Royal Marines. It's a salute to human achievement, spanning arts, technology, education, and innovation. Yet, it also addresses painful history, including the dark days of the emergency between 1952 and 1960. King Charles will pay homage at a new museum dedicated to Kenya's history and lay a wreath at the tomb of the unknown warrior at Uhuru Gardens, the site of Kenya's declaration of independence in 1963. Their grand entrance is marked by a ceremonial welcome at State House, followed by bilateral meetings and a state banquet, blending diplomacy and celebration. But there's more to come. King Charles will explore the United Nations office at Nairobi, engage with UN Habitat and the UN Environment Program, and delve into Kenya's vibrant tech scene. Their Majesties will focus on Kenya's youth and future leaders, 
while also honoring World War heroes at a Commonwealth War Graves Commission Cemetery. Nairobi National Park showcases Kenya's wildlife conservation and Her Majesty will champion animal welfare. The King, as Captain General of the Royal Marines, will exhibit defense collaboration at M. Tongui Naval Base, where Kenya's Marine Commando Unit demonstrates its training by the Royal Marines. Lastly, Queen Camilla will stand in solidarity with survivors of sexual and gender-based violence, offering support and insight. This state visit is an extraordinary odyssey, fusing diplomacy, history, innovation, and compassion. But will it bring the closure and alleviate the locals' deep-seated resentment for the British government? And is the highly anticipated national apology for the nation's shared painful past forthcoming? Only time will tell.